What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the EA Sports College Football 25 Akron Zips Dynasty. That is right, we are back. Week three here in the Akron Zips Dynasty, and we are 0-2. Still looking for that ever-elusive first win, but today we are taking on an FCS East team, which I believe is not the experts team as some of you guys know uh some of the fcs teams are you know popular youtubers you got uh bangles uh riverside royals in there you got not the expert you got a team from i believe good game bro i think but uh the fcs teams not very good on paper but i've been seeing lots of videos from other youtubers where the fcs teams are pretty good so are we going to get our first win today or will it be a challenge that remains to be seen and speaking of YouTubers, just want to highlight this real quick. Something really, really cool happened to me over the last couple of days. If you guys watched the opening uh, episode here of Zips Dynasty, we played the Ohio State Buckeyes. And something really, really bad gameplay-wise happened. I guess it's being dubbed as the butt interception now. But I sent that clip to uh, my guy, fellow YouTuber Ryan Moody. He actually used it in one of his videos, highlighted it, talked about it, gave me a shout out, which I thought was very, very cool. So shout out to Ryan Moody 21 for that. And then his video in turn got put into the uh, Madden 24, I'm sorry, Madden 25, no, the College Football 25 review from the Angry Joe Show. Another big YouTuber, 3 million something subscribers. And that clip from Ryan got featured in that as well. So I thought that was really, really cool. I was ecstatic. And if you guys haven't checked out those videos or, you know, are not hip to those YouTubers, go check them out because they're both very, very good. But back to Akron Zips Dynasty here. Just wanted to, you know, shout that out here really quick. I say it every week. And the only way that we're going to get better is to bring in some talent. And we got some talent on the board now. We got uh, Akeem Bolix, who's our big four-star quarterback that we're looking at. Tennessee is very, very far ahead of him. But we have Mr. Bullocks coming down to Akron, Ohio to attend a Zips practice today. Got to show him how Dudley Saxton really gets the boys fired up. And uh, not sure if it matters if we win this game or lose this game too much. But hopefully bringing him in, we get some, you know, get closer in the race with Tennessee because I really, really like Bullocks. Didn't even scout him, you know, all the way. Didn't really think that we needed to, but we got Ben Finley, who's a junior. He's not even that great. He's good. You know, he's good. But regardless of if Ben Finley plays well, he's going to be gone in a couple years. So we're going to have to bring somebody in behind him. And then we got another quarterback here, Ron L. Cutler, who were in the race with a couple other Ohio teams, but I'm not really sure. I mean, does Ronell really look that good? He's not fast at all. He can't run. He's got low awareness. He has decent throw power and I guess okay accuracy. But we might want to go ahead and try to find another quarterback to put on our board just in case we can't land Bullocks and in case we don't want Cutler. And we also got a four-star receiver, Kevin Teague. He's coming down for a visit as well in week six when we take on bgsu and he really looks good i mean he 92 speed i love that 90 acceleration he's got decent release he could catch the ball and we're we're pretty tight in the race with miami as well but i really really want to bring in teague and then we got a couple other receivers that we're looking at as well brian redmond we're pretty far ahead of northwestern ohio state kentucky and all them and uh not really sure though is redmond the guy i mean 84 speed 90 excel 59 awareness i don't like that this other guy we're looking at trevor matlock we're second in the running for him and he we haven't scouted him all the way but i already like the 89 speed better he looks like he may have better you know uh, route running and catching traffic so we're gonna do a little experiment here we're gonna take off we'll take off the friends and family uh here from brian redmond we'll leave on the five just because you know i wouldn't still wouldn't mind having him but I think that we actually put some of these points into Trevor Matlock, because if we do that, we will go ahead and contact his friends and family. We'll add that on there, and then we'll also DM the player as well. That leaves us with 70 hours, but I kind of like Matlock better than Redmond, and he's a four-star recruit compared to a three-star recruit. Tackles, we got Bobby Babineau, and we're really far ahead of the race in him. They say he's a bust. I still like him. But again, to kind of recoup some of these points, I'm going to take off the friends and family for him. Uh, we got Tavita Skura. We're sending the house at him. I will 
I guess leave leave the points on him. He looks pretty good. We haven't scouted him all the way either. And then we got uh, Nick Najvar, who we're first on his board, and we literally haven't done anything. So that is pretty good. Guard, I haven't really looked too far into any of those positions yet. Center, we're winning on Daniel Keenan, and not really uh, anybody else. No one's even given him an offer, as a matter of fact. So I guess we'll leave the points on him. I'm going to have to get some of these points back because defensive end here i need to put a couple more we're winning uh you know pretty easily on brian dwyer which i haven't even scouted by the way he's a three-star recruit he looked okay from what i saw but uh i'm gonna add probably another quarterback and a defensive end i really want malachi garba as well right now we are contacting his friends and family we're uh, looking him up on social media he looks really good and once he narrows down his top five i'll probably schedule a visit try to sell him um, but for now, I'm not going to use any more points. And then also Wayne Bullitt, the only middle linebacker we're scouting. So maybe we want to look at one more of those as well. Here's a three-star quarterback recruit with no offers so far. He's got some some teams that he's interested in. But Ben Hakeem, a six-foot scrambler, 270 pound, 217 pounds. We'll put him on the board at least. You know, it doesn't hurt. And got to look at defensive ends as well. I'm kind of sticking to the three-star prospects. Maybe uh, the four-star prospects, I imagine. Most of those guys probably got the, you know, schools figured out. It might be tough to get. I mean, see, there's no uh, four-star prospects that we can even make offers on right now. So looking at the three-star prospects here, we got Artie Doris, six-foot-four speed rusher. No offers made, but some big schools that, uh, that he's looking at, that he's interested in. Reed Genus, a six-foot-six power rusher guy. No offers on him. Not as big a school as looking at him. We also got Micah Veal here. He's a six-foot-five, 295-pound run stopper. He's got one offer from Indiana. He looks pretty good, though, as far as just, like, size and everything like that. I want to find some guys that, A, don't have any offers, and B, uh, you know, good size, good speed. Like this guy here, Gradkowski, he has no offers. But six foot two, not the best size for a power rusher. And, you know, we're already three weeks in. So some of these guys. Oh, this guy right here, though, Richard, uh, Richard Walter, six foot four, 292. No offers so far. Uh, Florida's in there. Georgia's in there. Alabama, some big name schools. But we'll go ahead and add him to our board as well. Yeah, I already like Hakeem much better than Cutler, if nothing else for the 90 speed, but also the 90 throw power. He may not be as accurate, but we're going to go ahead and offer a scholarship to Ben Hakeem. I mean, there's no reason not to. And we're also going to get since, you know, we're coming in a little late here, but no one's offered on him. I mean, is it worth it to send the house at a guy like this? I don't know. I think that we, for now, contact his friends and family. We'll search him on social media as we see, as you see. We're down to 40 hours already. We only have 400 to work with, so there's not, you know, we got to get better. Dudley Saxton does in uh, the good old recruiting department. And this guy here, Richard Walter, not even going to scout him, at least as of yet, because we don't have that many points. I'm sure he's better than what we got. We got a couple seniors, defensive ends that are going to be, you know, parting ways with us. So with 35 staff points, we will go ahead and contact his friends and family and we'll DM him as well. I guess you can't look at FSC team's rosters. I was going to go through their team real fast, but unless I missed it, I can't find it anywhere. So again, I have no idea. They're only a 68 overall. So I'm really hoping this is our first win. Again, I think this is not the expert YouTubers team, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's the FCS East Astronauts. They're going to be coming down to Info Station Stadium. We got a four-star recruit in the building. Got to show up and show out today. So without further ado, guys, if you are fired up for this series, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Almost at a 1,000 subscribers. Going to do an NFL jersey giveaway when we get there, so please help me get there. And without further ado, let's get on down to Info Station Stadium and get ready for the game. And can we get our first victory of the season? I really hope so because we have been really getting trounced by teams. Obviously, we're not that good, but this man right here, Dudley Saxton, needs to contain Brock Ladler from Bennington, Vermont, the six foot one junior, and try to fend off this, what I hope to be beatable FCS school. So they're coming out uh, with a tight single back formation. Weird, weird little formation there. Probably going to be a running play, although it is not. We got pressure coming, and down goes Ladler. He is going to be sacked there on the opening play of the game. That is CJ Nunnally. And he is slow to get up, so that is a great, great sign, at least to start 
from our defense. Another weird little set here for Ladler and the Astronauts. So we'll see if they go to the ground here after a loss of seven. Looking like it may be a running play. It is. But we are there to meet and contain the running back. Uh, Sh no, Shimon Cooper's ours. That is Dorian O'Neal. Again, I have no idea who is on this FCS squad. Never played them before, and I couldn't even look at their roster. So we're just kind of flying a little bit blind here. But obvious passing situation here for Ladler. And the boys, and he goes down again. That is Lama Lavea, the junior defensive tackle. And what a way for our defense to come out here with some intensity. Negative yardage on the astronauts opening play and we should get the ball here with Bobby Golden in great field position Or at least one would think and we really want to come out here with a quick strike Oh, yeah, we're gonna get this ball with great field position Although we are met there and stopped but we start the ball deep in FCS territory at the 32 yard line Gotta find a way for Ben Finley and the boys to punch this thing in and get off to an early lead. Start out here, shotgun, little RPO game with Faison Wilson. We're gonna go to him. We got some blockers on the edge too. Faison Jukes, he's had a really good season as our wide receiver number two, of course, behind Alex Adams, the superstar. But Faison has looked really, really good. And we are looking to uh, fill some of these seats here at Suma Field because they've been looking looking a little bit bare. And we also really got to find a way to get the running game established because so far <laughs> it's been more or less non-existent. And part of me, I really want to audible this and maybe hit Golden, but we're not. We're just going to stick with the run and trying to cut back here with uh, Kellum. We're not, or Marquez Williams rather was the uh, running back on that route, but we were not able to. It's like we got some blitzers coming in hot here, so maybe might be able to hit Adams or somebody on the route. We're actually going to go to Wisner, the tight end, and he hangs on. Okay, Max Wisner is an absolute weapon. He has played great for us in two games, and just like that, only took us a few plays on offense because we were gifted with such good field position. And we go up 6 nothing. hopefully if I can make this extra point 7 nothing, and jump off to an early lead. Ooh, that's close actually, yeah. See, when I kick extra points and field goals in this game, you're probably going to see the Buddha effect edited on the screen quite often. Because I'm still not great at the, uh, at the kicking. And it doesn't help. I just recorded an episode of Madden 24 SFL series. So I was back doing the Madden kicking, you know, uh, kicking way, which really <laughs> threw me off a bit. So got to make sure we're locked in on these kicks. Lexbone Trio right is their package. Yeah, this is some weird kind of weird packages that I'm seeing here. Uh, although this one, not so weird, kind of standard single back. But Ladler, it's going to be a run. Thought it was going to be a QB option. And that time the running back is able to pick up four. Second and six here. Just need to maintain our composure and continue to play some good defense. Ooh. Maybe LaVeya. Oh, I had a shot at number 40 there, which I believe is a fullback. Looks like a fullback anyways. Had a shot on him. It's uh, York. Okay. And unfortunately, I just missed and whiffed, so that's not good. Can't be doing that. And here they're content to be in these little uh, single back type formations. It looks like number two, the running back's got the star behind him. So got to watch him. It's a fullback pitch. Are you kidding me? Wow. And we are there with uh, Shimon Cooper and others to bring him down. Believe Darian Lewis, our star corner, was also in on that play as well. It's a weird FCS squad, man. They got fullbacks in here and they're running all these crazy set flex bones and all this. And that's a uh, other run up the gut. Seemed to be very run heavy. That was Jarvis May, the running back, who is two for eight. Averaging four yards on the ground, but we got them in another third and 12 situation. How clutch, clutch would it be to go up by two? I don't think that we've gone up by two in this series yet, and it's a screen, and we cannot let him score. Wow. Thinking my uh, lucky stars that David Jester, the free safety, was there. And another, uh, was that a three and out? or did, Yeah, that was a three and out. Another three and out from this FCS East Astronauts. And we got a chance to hopefully go up by two scores. Got to get this ground game going, though, with Kellum. We cannot be forced to have Ben Finley throw 30-plus passes a game. And for whatever reason, we just can't seem to figure it out. It's just not working too well. Maybe one of these days it will pop. But so far, boy, howdy, freaking Batman, has it been a struggle. So we're going to come out shotgun with Marquez Williams to our right. 
Might have Alex Adams there on the outside. We're going to go to Adams. Need a good pass and lofted it over the head of the corner. And Alex Adams, who is also a weapon, had a couple touchdowns in a game prior, I believe. He's able to move the sticks. So far, this Akron U team is looking pretty good. Adams kind of getting pressed on the outside, but I probably won't test that. We're going to go. We got Faison Wilson again trying to juke a man, but still picking up a healthy gain of seven. And I think we have to go through the air here as much as I don't want to. Alex is on that same little zig route again, but I don't really like that. So maybe Faison Wilson comes in from the inside. Oh, just check it down to our running back. Wilson, he caught it and gets the first down just barely oh my god nobody is on bobby golden we got to audible and get out of this play here can i do it in time i don't know what the heck yeah we're gonna go all go here and we gotta hit bobby golden on a quick step drop it's gotta be there although it's not so we're gonna go to wisner yeah they baited me they baited me they wanted to do that they wanted me to do that they wanted me to call a passing play i'm sure because the middle linebacker was right there to pick up coverage. But it was a good thought, though. Uh, you know, it was a good thought. Now we're second and ten. Let's go play action. This is a play where we usually are able to get Wisner, possibly. So, oh, yeah, he's open in the middle of the field. Ben Finley lobs it. And number three, who looks like he's one of their superstars, is there to get it. Also, a lot of injuries I'm seeing for this FCS team. But a good connection by Finley and tight end Max Wisner. It's an impressive start for these zips here, but can we keep it going? That is the question. We're going to go Wisner again. Oh, he hangs on, and he breaks a tackle. And Max Wisner, he's in for his second touchdown. What a weapon number 87 is. What a weapon number 87 is. Shooting a bow and arrow into that crowd. And is it just me, or is this Akron Zips crowd looking a little bit more packed than it has been in previous games? I don't know. But I'll tell you what, man, Finley and Wisner, look at that catch. That was a diving attempt there by number four. And then Max Wisner just shrugs off the would-be tackler with callous disregard. You got to love to see it. Extra point should be up and good. And don't look now, guys, but we're up 14. Two scores for the first time, I believe, in this series. Are we going to see passes from uh, Brock Ladler? And this team, it seems like it's all runs, and I'm actually okay with that. Another pitch play to number two, and we are there with our own number two there to bring him down. That is Damon David, the safety, and we got them in another third down situation, but that's going to be the end of the quarter. And I mean, Akron Zip's playing good so far on both ends of the ball. Max Wisner has a couple touchdowns. Obviously, so does Ben Finley. But look at this FCS squad, only eight passing yards and 12 rushing yards. They really can't get anything going. We're going to audible into pressure. I'm pretty much assuming this is going to be a run. Which it is. And we're there to meet him again. You got to be kidding me. Wow. And May, the running back, also just got injured. So that's like their only, their only uh, offense right now. So what are they going to do without him? This is a very strange playbook that they're running again i have no idea i don't even think you could play as fcs teams at least again i tried to look them up uh, with their roster we know they're not very good with a 68 overall squad but i would be curious to know like what is this playbook that they're running i'm not sure i've seen anything like it before it's it's weird but i'll tell you what it's working to our advantage now can the run game work to our advantage that's the question okay williams picking up a gain of about 12 which it might be a freaking season high for this Akron Zip squad. Oh shit. Oh, shit. oh shit! Tell him, can you pick up where he left off? He's got the edge. There goes Kellum. Okay, he has the speed too. Oh my God, don't let... Look, if you let this Akron Zip squad start rushing the ball well, watch the freak out. If we're passing the ball well and rushing the ball well, and I know this is not a good school, right? They're lower overall than us, but man, it's just nice to see some things go in our favor for a change. And I think we're going to go RPA game. Got to watch Golden here on the outside. We're going to do a little touch pass. It's a block from Adams. Oh, man. Maybe I shouldn't have lob passed it. Maybe I should have bullet passed it. But I just want to make sure we got it over the head of that defender. Coming out in our goal line package. Can Charles Kellum punch it in, please? I think he might. Oh, my God. 21-0. 21-0 blowout. No, I'm not going to say that. Look. This Zips team's terrible. I was fully expecting a second half collapse. Knock on wood. But you just got to love it. And we got a four-star quarterback in the building. 
He's attending practice. I mean, you know, I'm sure he's not watching this game. But maybe since he's in Akron, Ohio, you know, maybe we gave him a couple free tickets. I'm sure we would. Maybe he's here watching somewhere on the sidelines. I don't know. Akeem Bullock, he's the guy I'm, I'm referring to from uh, pregame, the recruiting. Want him to definitely see a win today. So far, we're doing a good job of making that happen. What will this astronaut squad do here on this drive? Will they pass it? That's the question. This is probably going to be a, it's a run. It's an option, and we're there to drop him. That's CJ Nunnally. That should be his Should be his second sack. They say .5. Maybe that's that might be actually considered a design run. But still, he's getting back there in the backfield. He's making stuff happen, and you got to love it. He's one of our better players as well. Uh, got to get some defensive linemen, and they are just only running this ball. I mean, is this, is this, uh, I don't think this is a glitch or anything like that. Maybe we'll get a look here. I still got it on all American, uh, you know, not putting it on Heisman yet. If you guys watched the previous two first games. You'll know why not the best at this game yet. And our squad sucks, but I can tell you as, you know, assuming hoping, right. Assuming that we, uh, get a little bit better and start playing good. I will bump the difficulty up to Heisman and we got to get there. Why would you slide? <laughs> Brock Ladler, negative 17 yards. What is this? What is this school? I don't know why you would slide in that situation because you got to pick up a first down. So just lower your shoulder, try to make something happen. But Brock Ladler, he was content to slide. And again, we're going to get this start this drive off from astronauts territory. This might be the most times that I've said move the chains in <laughs> Akron Zips. I know this is only our third episode, but man, I'll tell you. You guys know it has been a struggle. So first and 10, we're going to go play fake and just see who could possibly get open. Oh, we got somebody wide open there. You got to be kidding me. Wow. It's Bobby Golden, the junior. And what a dot. Dropped it in the bucket from Ben Finley. And let me pinch myself. Make sure I'm not dreaming here. We go up by four scores against this very strange FCS East Astronauts team. They only have one a pass attempt for eight yards. They've thrown the ball one time. All right. I mean, uh, Brock Ladler and, and May, the running back, right? I believe it's May. Do your thing. It's going to be a May handoff again. And five yards might be their biggest. Uh, Dorio. Oh, that was Dorio O'Neal, I guess. Okay. Again, don't know these players. Don't have uh, my cheat sheet with the players' names that I rely on so heavily because that couldn't view their roster. But second and five here, Ladler sending a man in motion. It's going to be a design run. And this time, oh, man, Ladler, I thought he was going to get crunched in the backfield. He's still at negative 15 yards on seven attempts. I see no reason just to keep sending the blitz, man. They've shown me no reason to believe it's going to be a running play. And again, stopped. That's going to take us to the two-minute warning. Can we drop 35 points in the first quarter? I don't know, but we're going to try our darndest, and I don't really like anyone that's getting open. That's a good pass by Finley, and that's actually going to be a catch and a completion. And Ben Finley is throwing some dots. They only one in completion. That is that's awesome. That is awesome. Booth review, though. They're going to see if our receiver got his foot down. I thought he did at least get one foot down. See if they overturn it or not. They actually do overturn it. Wow. I mean, hey, whole game can't go our way, right? So I guess it's okay. That, uh, that was kind of like the first thing that went against us, and it's whatever. Alex Adams, oh, almost sacked there. First sign of real pressure by FCS East as well. It's probably going to be Golden or Wisner on this, I would think. Maybe Golden up the middle. Um, can we, ah, pressure, oh, ball bouncing around there, okay. All right, so for the first time of the day, we are going to send out our punter, Dante Jackson. I haven't seen him today, and we've been seeing him a lot lately in a lot of these episodes. Should be a good punt, though. Might be able to pin him. Eh, accuracy was off a little bit, and not even going to finish inside the 20. It's actually not a good punt. I mean, FCS, they, they got to start throwing some passes now, right? You would think, okay, now they finally are airing it out. And it's good defense there on the outside. That was great defense by Devontae Golden Nelson, our junior. And, yeah, I mean, Brock Ladler's arm is probably not, <laughs> probably not warmed up too much because he hasn't really been slinging the ball. This man coverage audible here on the outside. Shouldn't have done that, but I did. 
And maybe that's why he's not throwing it because that pass was cheeks. Get some pass, shading inside here. They may just run it though, actually. I wouldn't be surprised. They actually do. And oh, you gotta be kidding me, no! That might be their first first down of the game and it came on a third and 10 run. So like, yeah, this school and this playbook and this squad, just so, so strange. But that was like the first thing that really went well for them. It's gonna be a hand. No, it's a great play fake. Actually, hey, that's Brock Ladler, dude. He's not really slinging the ball too well. Good defense, guys. Don't let them back into this ball game. Again, the second half collapse. I could easily see that happening. Oh, La Ladler gonna do it with himself on the ground. Might have been a little late hit on the sliding Brock Lather, but whatever. They didn't call it. I don't think they call late hits like that if the quarterback goes into a slide animation. At least I never see it. And here, uh, see what Ladler decides to do. He is, yeah, my man. And now I see why all these runs are happening. Brock Ladler, nah, he's, what's he, like a, a one-star guy? Probably a two-star guy if he was a recruit. I don't know. He's not very good, though, because he, he can't really complete a pass at all. And nice moves there. Okay. We got one more chance to put up 35 points. I think I'll actually put Adams on a curl there on the outside. I like that. We got some. Blitzer is going to be coming in hot as well, I believe. Maybe. Oh, that's a terrible pass. That's going to be picked. That, yeah, that was, that was terrible. That was a terrible pass. And we are actually going to allow FCS East to score. I, I touched past that, or actually kind of like a lob even. No way I should have thrown that, um, and it was not accurate at all by Ben Finley. So we've seen some good stuff from Ben Finley today. That, unfortunately, was not one of them. You know, I was just going to go into the locker room, but nice 12-yard run, and we got decent field position, so we'll at least try like a screen pass here, and the pass is there. It's going to be Marquez Williams juking people. Okay, let's go turbo here, a little tempo. And I guess we are running screen again. <laughs> I didn't necessarily mean to, but I guess that we are because I can't change the play now. And a screen again might actually just be the right move as I believe Williams gets out of bounds. Now we'll stop the clock. See a blitzer there. Uh, so we're going to actually street golden, but this may just be Kellum out of the backfield or we're going to actually give him a chance. Come on. Oh, a dot from Finley redeeming himself after that interception and that might be bobby golden's second and wow this is like the longest half of football ever because we just keep seeing chunk plays and picks and uh fcs just running and doing crazy stuff like that but i am impressed with what i am seeing from ben finley today that was not an easy pass at all and he was able to drop it in only a place that bobby golden could get it and that surely to take us into halftime. And that will take us to halftime here at InfoCision Stadium, Summa Field. Look at Bobby Golden, two catches, both touchdowns for 75 yards on five targets. He is playing great and so is Mr. Ben Finley. And we got a chance to, I mean, this game, you know, not not gonna say it's over because it's the Akron Zips, but I mean, come on. It's a four score game. We start with the ball. I'm gonna just be doing everything I can to, to get this clock. That's our only blemish, as you see. That pick six, which should have never been thrown anyways. But we are going to do our best to just get father time out of this game and get out of Zips Field or InfoCision Stadium with our first win of the season. season. Fingers freaking crossed. Let's just come out here and exert our dominance in the running game, please. I'll tell you what, Marquez Williams is running very, very good. He's running better than uh, really we've seen Kellum run. So maybe, I don't know if it's just this FCS team or maybe, you know, maybe Marquez Williams is the guy. He's a freshman. Kellum is a sophomore. So he's definitely, you know, going to be on this team for a while. And the holes continue to be there. Two back-to-back -back great runs for Marquez Kellum. Try Williams again. Up the gut. We got a guard pulling. And, I mean, even that, you know, look, looking like he would have been stopped uh, in the backfield. He was still able to pick up three. So yeah, maybe Marquez Williams is the guy. Now I also see Alex Adams is getting pressed on the outside. We know Ben Finley's got a cannon. He's been showing us all game. So if I see that safety cheat down, which unfortunately I didn't. So yeah, Bobby Golden, we just kind of threw a little hospital ball to him, unfortunately. But we're just going to go RPO in this situation. No need to do anything crazy. And I think Golden's actually going to get it. Yes, he is. 
And I like Alex Adams as a blocker out there, man. He's our superstar receiver. Haven't really, you know, called his name too much in this game. But I like what he does uh, in the blocking game as well. Every time we throw an RPO, we see him out there. So a lot of heart from that man. And we're going to go RPO again. This time, Faison Wilson, and it's there. And there you see Alex Adams again doing his thing in the blocking game. Marquez Williams, he has been the man. Can he continue that? I mean, oh, he fumbled it. No, pick it up. Marquez, Marquez, Marquez. Or is it Marcus? I don't know. What's your government name? You are just getting all the praise in the world from me, and then you got to go and do me like that live on my video, fumble the ball, and we were trying to really open this thing up. And I would say the only way that uh, FCS East is maybe even still in this game is because of turnovers, the pick, and then that fumble, although they still got a big mountain to climb, and there is Antavius Fish, our good senior middle linebacker there, to make a good stop. And, uh, yeah, I mean... Have you guys noticed all the injuries down there at the bottom of the screen for FCS East? This is a weird school. Like, this may be one of the weirder games of uh, football that I've played on Madden and or College Football 25. And we're going to be there to meet the ball carrier and then uh, Tori uh, uh, O'Neal. What, what's, what's up with their uh, training staff, man? They need to all be fired. We need to smuggle some illegal substances in there for this FCS team because they just can't stay healthy. They need a jolt of something because uh, they're at risk of having to punt the ball again and squander that great th that great uh, chance they were given with the fumble. And that is exactly what they're going to do unless they decide to go for it here, which they will not. Okay, now we see Charles Kellum in there. So maybe Marquez Williams, he's probably getting an earful from Dudley Saxton. We know Dudley Saxton was a running back on the Sentinels, so he knows all about carrying that ball and protecting that ball. And I just cannot even... I cannot even comprehend the amount of injuries that we're seeing for FCS East. It's really wild. It's a good time to uh, get some more practice in on the passing game. You know, we got a great lead and want to make sure whoever our opponent is next week that we uh, are ready for them. And wow, that was almost a pick looking for Faison Wilson. Williams there might be open, which he is not. But Wisner is, and we know Wisner is the man. Couldn't turn the corner fast enough. And oh, Shocker there, another injury by FCS East, but he actually, Wilson actually did get the first down on that one, so yeah, I like that, let's go uh, back to Wisner here, maybe we got Wilson and Wise there, like three defenders there, all standing in front of Wilson, I don't know what to expect with this team, uh, I, I expect the unexpected at this point, but I also expect Max Wisner to catch that, and what a game he is having, he may be our uh, most explosive weapon on this offense, Either him or Alex Adams, I would say. Second and eight. I'm thinking maybe this might be Wisner's third touchdown. If I don't see it, I'll probably just check it down to Faison Wilson there. But I do see it. And Wisner, bang. Okay, so we might have something there. Alex Adams is hyped as well. But we might have something. Or maybe it's just this team. I don't know. But I'm just liking this connection. Ben Finley now over 300 yards. So you love to see that, but I am just loving this connection between Wilson and Wisner, or uh, Finley and Wisner, rather. And if we keep doing things like that, man, we may start to see these seats uh, filling up here at InfoCision Stadium. And I also hope that our four-star QB who's in town is also loving this game as well, if he's watching. It's a fumble! Oh my god, it's a fumble! I was, we just got the ball back. Wow. I was just about ready to quit talking and it was a fumble. So what in the heck happened on that play? We see the return man coming out. Is it clean and will it stand? Uh, let's see. Where is that pig skin? He's got it right there. Oh yeah, that puppy is out. And look, we're right there to pick it up. I mean, everything's going right for us in this game. And I am here for it. Oh, Marquez Williams might score too. Can we juke him, man? Oh, look at the savage juke. This thing's over, man. You're probably going to see me cut deep into the fourth quarter. And how's about that? I'll tell you what. When we get to next week, and we'll see what school we're playing next week. If it's a, obviously, I mean, it's got to be a better school than this, right? It's not going to be any, uh, we don't play any more ranked teams, I don't think. So we'll see how this game goes here. We'll see if this, I mean, this game, we know how it's went. We'll see how next game goes. 
And depending on how next game goes, I might, I'll might probably bump up the difficulty to Heisman. I really only had it on All-American just for the first couple of weeks. We played Ohio State, Rutgers. I was new to the game. I was sucking on stream. But, you know, if you watch all my Madden series, those are all on All-Madden. So I'm, I'm assuming that we're probably going to bump the difficulty up to Heisman. But I just want to see at least how next week goes and see if this one was just a fluke. But, man, we are just dominating the astronauts in all phases of the game in this one you're pretty deep into the fourth quarter and just for s's and g's i'm gonna try to hit alex adams uh it's not there so we'll just scramble out with Put ben finley in. and that defender what was he doing i have no idea i have no idea what he was doing ben finley picking up a massive game and it's actually marquise williams so my apologies i've been mispronouncing it this whole time i know that because he actually got a pick for us uh, a couple uh about two minutes ago here in the quarter so that's pretty cool he's a little hybrid playing defense and running back and there's keys we're just gonna call him keys again he might be our new weapon our new playmaker see there he's at 12 for 87 and a touchdown and the coach really wants us to pass in this situation not 100 percent sure why but uh, he may be our new guy because he's killing it on the ground and also has a nice pick as well we're going to put Charles Kellum on a wheel. Got some uh, defenders coming in hot, it looks like. And we will just go ahead and give it to uh, uh, Faison Wilson. And yeah, this game's pretty much over. Looking like we might put up a 50 bomb on him. Oh, it's going to be Keith again. Got to celebrate into the end zone. He and Max Wisner and, of course, Ben Finley. They have been our power three guys today, as we do, in fact... Whoa, I mean, much different. <laughs> that first two games were rough, man, against Ohio State and Rutgers. If you guys watched them, you'll know, you know. So that was on All-American, too. And what a – it's it's got to be this school. I'm very curious to see – we'll take a look and see who we – the next opponent that we play next week. And I'm very curious to see what that game looks like because in this game, I mean, we're looking like we should be a ranked team, right? We're not obviously not going to be anywhere near being ranked after this one. Ooh, oh, oh, thought that might be a kick return touchdown. But 56 to 7, FCS East, the only reason that they have any points is because I threw a pick six. And if this is what we're looking like next week, guys, we may have figured something out and we may be uh, bumping on up to, I mean, I think we're going to go to Heisman difficulty anyways. But I am just in awe right now, and there is going to be a lot to unpack stat-wise after this game. Okay, now Ladler wants to finally turn on the Jets. He threw some dimes on that drive. And it looks like we are going to allow 14 on the scoreboard. Uh, more of the wide receiver with a nice catch there. But it doesn't matter. It's 56-14. But finally, at the end of the game, Barack Ladler for these FCS astronauts finally decided started to uh, start showing off his arm his arm strength because he was throwing dots on that one but look looks like uh, we're gonna get our first win of the season here guys how's about that 56 14 and what may I'm, I'm actually embarrassed that we allowed 14 points with the way that that astronauts team played really should only be seven uh or maybe you know none but ben finley five touchdowns 289 yards through the air he is your player of the game Arguably could be uh, Marquise Williams, could be Bobby Golden. You know, there's a lot a lot of players that really stepped up as you get a look at some of the highlights here. But we got to run through these stats because there is a lot, a lot of good things that you will see from Akron. I got to see, uh, let me look at this Brock Ladler character. So he was, oh, it wasn't even Ladler at the end. It was Matthew Millard. I don't know. I'm confused. But Ladler only attempted, he's a, he's a junior, he is six foot one, 190 scrambler. He only attempted six passes, and yeah, it was, it was Miller there at the end, so maybe, maybe they should have been rolling with that guy the whole time, I don't know. But this guy that we were rolling with the whole time, Ben Finley, great game, 20 for 26, 289, five touchdowns, of course that one boneheaded pick, but look at our running game, finally starting Finally starting to show its face here. Marquise Williams, 13 for 93, two touchdowns. And also Charles Kellum, can't forget about him. He played a great game as well, 10 for 61, and also a touchdown for him as well. And then receiving Max Wisner went 6 for 113 for three touchdowns. And Bobby Golden, 4 for 88 for two touchdowns. 
Faison Williams had a or Wilson had a good game. Marquise Williams and Alex Adams only with one catch. That's crazy because he was like our one bright spot on offense here. Shaman Cooper led us in tackles. CJ Nunnally had a bunch as well. And then TFLs, we were just living in the backfield. Three for Cooper, three for CJ Nunnally, two for Lama Lavea, one for I mean, just a bunch of players got TFLs in that one. That is awesome to see. Lavea had one and a half sacks, Nunley had one, and Shimon Cooper had a half a sack as well. And oh, Darian Lewis, I could have swore him and Marquise Williams, do they have the same number? 24? Is that is that a thing? Now I gotta check that. I could have swore it was it was Marquise. Yeah, they're both number 24. So okay. That's why I was confused on that. But still, what a game from all of the Akron Zips. Keem Bullocks has reached his top three schools. We are one of them, but still way behind Tennessee. So I don't know what that visit's gonna do for us in terms of getting getting us up closer there in the race, but we may be out on that. Uh, Deontay Jackson, the free safety, we're number one on his board. That's awesome. And then Brian DeWire, the defensive end, has reached his top five schools. And we are number one for him as well. So really hoping that we can start to see some commits. How about that, though? Max Wisner, the MAC Offensive Player of the Week. Six receptions, 117 yards, and three touchdowns. That is great for arguably one of our best weapons. And we take on Carol South Carolina in the next game here. Players of the Week, that's great. Again, happy for, for uh, Max Wilson. And no national Players of the Week, but I will settle for a MAC Offensive Player of the Week or a MAC Player of the Week. That's great to see. And if we get a look at, I want to take a quick look at, uh, where's our schedule here? Yeah, we want to go to team schedule and just kind of see what the rest of, yeah, I mean, see, look, you see Rutgers, Ohio State. We got owned by them, same difficulty. And the rest of our schedule, we got some MAC teams coming up here that we got to play against, the Bobcats and Bowling Green. But really, there's not anybody too crazy. Kent State, another MAC, uh, well, that's for the wagon wheel, actually, and then Toledo. So a pretty winnable schedule, I would say. You know, the two best teams that we take on, we we took them on in the first two weeks of the season. But we'll see how this game against South Carolina goes. That's also a TV game as well. So we got to make sure we suit up and show out for that one. But uh, hey, interesting episode, but happy to get our first W in the column here for this uh, Akron Zips dynasty. So... That is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.